What's up guys, David here from Phone Buff, and one of the most exciting new features introduced with Android 4.4 is one that Google has been quietly working on for the past two years and is also hidden deep down in KitKat's developer options in a brand new runtime called Art, which is short for Android Runtime. So what is Art and what does it do? Well, we'll get into that in a little bit, but for right now, all you need to know that is with Art, Google is looking to finally resolve one of the long lasting issues that has been plaguing Android since day one and that Android as a system is relatively slow in running applications. Now, the key word there is relatively slow because when you pick up a phone like the Google Nexus 5, the words slow or laggy or anything of that sort are pretty much the last things that come to mind. But yet, when you look at the app performance on even a speedster like the Nexus 5, relative to the app performance on a phone like the iPhone 5S, which of course is running on an entirely different operating system in iOS 7, you'll notice that while the two phones are very close in terms of overall performance, the Nexus 5 still falls a little bit behind when running third-party apps. Which leads to a question that a lot of Android fans have, which is, how is it that a phone like the iPhone 5S with a dual-core 1.3 gigahertz chip can outperform the Nexus 5 with a quad-core 2.3 gigahertz chip? Well, there are a couple of potential explanations for this. One of which is, just like you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, you also shouldn't judge the iPhone 5S's A7 chip based solely on its clock speed and cores because it's actually a lot better of a chip than most people give it credit for. Another reason is that you have to consider the differences between things like screen resolution and also the different way each operating system handles multitasking, both of which can easily affect performance. And then finally, the main one, which is what we'll be focusing on in this video, is the different levels of app optimization that are present on each OS. So right now with Android, the way most apps are run is through what is called the Dalvik runtime, which is the current runtime on pretty much every Android device out there that Art, that new runtime we were talking about earlier, seeks to eventually replace. Now, before I go on any further, let me take a step back really quick and explain what Dalvik is and why Android uses it in the first place. So basically, with the very, very high chance that I'm oversimplifying this to a fault, when a developer writes an app, he does it in a programming language like Java that's easily readable by humans, or at least humans that are developers. Then, before publishing the app to the Play Store, he partially compiles it into what is called bytecode, which is sort of a halfway between human readable code that a developer can read and machine readable code that your phone's CPU can read. After you download the app onto your phone and launch it, the Dalvik virtual machine, in which most apps run, takes this halfway in between bytecode and translates it or compiles it into full-on machine code that your phone's particular CPU can easily understand. Dalvik does this using what is called the just-in-time or JIT compiler, where the compilation is done each and every time you run the app, just when it needs to, hence the name just-in-time. Now, the advantage in handling apps like this is the developer doesn't have to worry about coding his app for each and every different type of processor out there, which on Android would be very difficult to do given the wide range of devices. And also, because these apps are running within a virtual machine, they won't affect the rest of the operating system if something were to go terribly wrong, like force closes or malware. So, so far, so good, right? But like I said in the beginning, the problem is, as a system, Android is relatively slow in running applications, and while there can be a bunch of different reasons for this, if the problem is that your apps are running slow, then you have to take a good hard look at the very thing that's running your apps. And over the last two to three years, that is exactly what Google has been doing. And now with Android 4.4 KitKat, Google has debuted their new runtime, albeit experimentally, in Art. Now, in some ways, Art is very similar to Dalvik, almost like a Dalvik 2.0, if you will, in that it's still a virtual machine, which means they get to keep all the different architecture support and all that good stuff. But one of the big areas and where it differs is, instead of using the just-in-time compiler where the code was being compiled every single time you ran the app, Art uses the much smarter ahead of time or AOT compiler where the app is compiled just once at the time of installation. So what does this mean for Android? Well, it means that with Art, apps will run more natively, similar to how they do on the iPhone and iOS, and that they'll be pre-compiled before you ever launch them. In turn, there'll be one less step for the processor to do when you launch the app, which theoretically should result in faster app performance, better resource management, and as a byproduct of the lesser load on the CPU, potentially better battery life as well. 
All right, so on paper, all this sounds really good, but how does that actually perform in the real world? Well, I decided to put art to the test, and the first thing I did was run a speed test with a series of apps like I always do, with a Nexus 5 using the current runtime in Dalvik on your left, and a Nexus 5 using art on your right. And as you can see as I go through all these speed tests here, there actually is a difference between the two. Now, it's not a huge difference by any means, which is partly because the Nexus 5 is just so damn fast with that Snapdragon 800 that just kind of flies through the process of compilation, but it also may be due to the fact that art is still in beta and isn't fully optimized yet. Though, even right now, at this early stage of development, it's looking pretty damn good. But there are some downsides to using art over Dalvik. For one, because the apps are being compiled ahead of time, i.e. at the time of install, Apps do take quite a bit longer to install with Art than they would with Dalvik, but it's usually only a difference of a couple of seconds, so it's really not that big of a deal, especially when you consider that it's only a one-time thing. The second drawback, which in my mind is way more significant, is that these pre-compiled apps can take anywhere between 10 to 80% more storage space. On my Nexus 5, with the apps that you saw in the speed test and all the stock apps that are included, Switching from Dalvik to Art took up 460 megabytes of extra storage space, which if you're already running low on memory could be a pretty big deal, but at the same time, Art app sizes are very similar to the app sizes found on iOS, which obviously hasn't been that big of an issue for iOS users, so I can't really see it being a deal breaker on Android. Okay, now before I wrap up this video, I know some of you guys are going to go and try to switch to art, so I must warn you that art is considered experimental right now, which kind of explains why it's hidden deep down in the settings and some of your favorite apps may be incompatible. I know for me, our Dio and WhatsApp are no longer working and there are actually quite a few more which are actually detailed on a post on Reddit, which I'll be linking to right below that like button, but other than that, that is pretty much it for me in this video. Like I said in the beginning, I think art is easily one of the most exciting new features in Android 4.4. Not because it's ready to use right now, which clearly it isn't, I mean it is experimental, but it does give us a little glimpse into what Google has in store for the next version of Android. Whether that be 4.5 or 5.0, who really knows, but either way, I'm really looking forward to it. If you guys liked the video or if you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, it really does help out the channel and speaking of which, if you haven't subscribed to Phone Buff already, I'd highly suggest doing so, so you can be among the first to see more mobile technology videos just like this. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.